Welcome back everybody. In this video we're going to do a processing tutorial on the Leo triplet in Adobe Photoshop. I've been using Adobe for a couple months now. I really like it. So we're going to do our first processing tutorial in Adobe Photoshop. Let's hop in, into the desktop here and start processing some astrophotography pictures. My name's Trevor and you're watching Astro Pilot. Alright guys, so here we are in Adobe Photoshop 2020. Um, I really love this program, it has a lot of capabilities, definitely when you add some of the astrophotography plugins like Gradient Exterminator and Astronomy Tools and Action Sets, that's what I'll be using today. So this is a 5 hour and 30 minute uh, integration image of the Leo triplet shot over two nights. Um, three minute exposures at ISO 800 and it was stacked in Deep Sky Stacker um, no drizzle this time just because due to the uh, sake of the tutorial when you drizzle it will uh, slow down the computer because you're working with a larger image so this has a 4000 by 2800 uh, pixel resolution so that's what we'll be process processing today and we have our RGB histogram uh, window opened up here and our layers and our information. So the first thing we want to do is set our black and white point. So um, we'll just use the color sampler tool and get in a really dark area of the sky right here. So right there seems good. And then for our black, I mean for our white point we will zoom in on a star like this one right here and we'll get our white point just like that. So our black and white points are set and you'll see the uh, info down here so we want to keep those numbers um, as even as possible um, around the same for all three color channels. So now since we've set those uh, black and white points we can go ahead and do the initial crop of the picture um, use the cropping tool and I usually like definitely with galaxies like this take about that much off of it to start with and just get rid of any of the stacking artifacts or um, uh, picture shifting within the stacking uh, process so um, of course, I'll crop it anyway to get the final image up close more, so um, that right there seems to be a pretty good size crop to me to start with, so we can just hit enter, and now we can start stretching, so we'll go ahead and duplicate layer, and we can name this first adjustment. And you can either duplicate layer or create new layer on top of that one. Uh, same difference really. Um, so for the sake of the tutorial I will just be duplicating the layer and renaming it and um, stuff like that. So first we will start with our curve adjustments and we'll do a simple curve stretch to start with. And you can see we have some pretty bad gradient going on already. Probably because I started shooting lower in the sky. And there was a couple thin clouds that moved over as well. So that seems like a pretty good curve right there. We'll start with that. And then we can zoom in. Now we can adjust the black point because the green's a lot higher than all the other stuff, so we'll go to levels and adjust that green black point down to seven. So the black point's all even now, and you can start to see those galaxies really well. So we'll go ahead and do another curve stretch. And 
and this is when you're going to start seeing some detail in those galaxies. You don't want to go over aggressive with the curves, but we have a lot of time on this, and that histogram's really nice and thin and tall, so that's what you want. So, we'll go ahead and, and adjust the levels again. I'll keep it at about 15 for now. About 14. Alright, so, and already look at that detail within those galaxies. You got the hamburger galaxy here and these other two right here so already I can tell this is going to be a nice image um, so we'll go ahead and uh, make another layer so duplicate layer and we'll call this adjustment 2 so we can go ahead and do another curve stretch. And see what we get out of it. We'll zoom in here a little bit. This is one of my favorite targets for the galaxy season because you get so much out of it because you're getting these three galaxies, you got an edge on view, and then these side view ones here. Go to adjustments and curves. We'll do another curve stretch. And there we go, getting a lot of detail out of those galaxies now. It's pretty hard to get some of that outer detail on the hamburger galaxy because it's uh, faint edges of the galaxy. But with more time, you'll be able to you'll be able to pull more uh, detail out of it. Along with more curve stretches, you're blowing up the stars more, but that will be fixed later on with our star reduction technique. So, now we're just going to adjust the levels again. And we'll bring the red down to. I want to keep it around in the teens, the high teens, for the black point. Just like that. So that's looking pretty good. The noise level is sort of uh, sort of high. I'm gonna bring that uh, green black point down again, just a little bit. So go back to levels. And we're gonna get that green one down just a little bit more. pretty good for now so we'll zoom out and we have a pretty good gradient going on here so this is a very useful uh, plugin that I'm about to use it's from RC Astro and it's called gradient exterminator and it is a plugin for Adobe Photoshop and, and it's an, a fully automated thing so you just go to filters and RC Astro Gradient Exterminator. So first we're going to make another level, uh, layer, duplicate layer, and we'll call this Gradient. So now we have that other layer, and now we can run Gradient Exterminator. Um, so what we're going to do, go to Filters, RC Astro, Gradient Exterminator, and these are the settings you can do. Um, I usually start out with medium and medium, but uh, depending on how it looks, you can do uh, low or high aggressiveness or detail. Uh, for me, for the type of gradients I usually deal with, um, the medium and medium work well, so we're going to go ahead and run that. And it only takes a couple seconds to run. And there we go, it already made a huge difference in the uh, the way the background sky looks, so we can do a before and after, and look at that, it's it's 
much, much better. So we're going to zoom in and adjust those black points a little more, get them all even again. You can see we still have sort of a green background, so instead of bringing down the black point anymore, we're going to go to Curves and select the green and do it this way. Just bring that down just a tad. Basically the same thing as adjusting the black point, but it's a little more globally uh, effective on everything in the picture. Um, so I like that right there, that looks better. And we can we see that histogram up here all nice and straight and level. Um, so we can zoom back in and look at those galaxies. Nice color um, and everything. So, so far I'm really happy with this image. Um, so next is noise reduction. So we're going to duplicate player and call this noise reduction one. So my favorite way to reduce noise initially is using the built-in filter from Adobe. It's called Camera Raw Filter. It is really nice. Um, it's it's one of the best stock. Uh, noise reduction features that I've seen. Um, it really smooths it out all the while keeping the stuff sharp that you want. So we'll zoom in here, take a look at the galaxies, and you can tell we have a lot of noise in the background. It was about 50 degrees outside when I shot this, so it was not a super cold night, but it was relatively cool. So what we're going to do is click on the detail tab here and we have sharpening and noise reduction so luminance noise reduction is the overall noise and then color uh, reduces those colored pixels uh, noise pixels here you see some red in there and stuff so that will get rid of that but that will also take away color within the galaxies as well but we can retain that after uh, we do some vibrance enhancing so what we're going to do first is luminance, so we're going to slide that up to about uh, 25 or so, that looks pretty good. Still retaining detail within the galaxies, um, but we're smoothing out that background sky. So next we'll do some color noise reduction, bump that up to about in. Let's see what that looks like. And that looks much better already. Um, still slightly noisy, but uh, there's an action set for that that we'll worry about here in a little bit. But for the initial noise reduction, that looks really good to me. And it's all a personal preference. Definitely for DSLR users, it's going to be higher tolerance for noise like me uh, but if some of you guys are shooting with a dedicated astronomy camera noise is not going to be an issue for you um, but with DSLR users like me it, uh, it's definitely a problem but so far that looks uh, I'm happy with that we're gonna bump up that detail just a tad and let's see what it looks like if I decrease it. Keep it about 25. So we can always sharpen the galaxies themselves. You can see we'll st still, still see all those uh, nice details within the galaxy. 
probably my favorite galaxy within the Leo triplets is the Hamburger Galaxy. Um, it's just a nice edge-on view galaxy. So that should do it for now. Let me take a look at the sharpening features. See what it does when I dump that up. That does help out on uh, making those details stand out more within the galaxy. So I think I'll leave that at around 20. And that's a good balance between noise reduction and sharpening. So yeah, I think that's good for now. So we'll hit OK. A huge difference in the background sky. Look at that before and after. So I'll zoom in here. That's before, and that's after, so very nice capabilities for noise reduction. Um, let's see. So next we're gonna do another layer and call it noise reduction two. Um, so this is where the astronomy tools and action set come into play. This has a lot of features. Um, so we'll open windows and hit actions. So you can see we have uh, lots of options here. The main ones I use is space noise reduction and deep space noise reduction uh, for noise capabilities. Um, then as you get for star reduction, there, they, there are uh, star reduction actions and um, sharpness actions, stuff like that. So it's a really helpful plugin to help automate some of the things that could do that could be hard to do manually in Photoshop. So the first thing we're going to do is hit deep space noise reduction. I like to use this one a lot because it just helps denoise that background sky even more while still keeping the sharpness of the deep sky object. So we're going to hit deep space noise reduction and hit play. This will take a couple minutes to run and uh, should be able to see a difference. So the action is complete. We'll take a look here. We'll zoom in. Um, there's a before and there's an after. It took some of the detail away from the galaxies, but it still softened that image up to a nice extent uh, to where it's not too soft, but still sharp enough to get that detail. Um, so far it is looking really good. Um, we're going to adjust our black point one more time and get that background nice and dark. That's what you want with these galaxy pictures. Um, just get that nice empty space dark background sky. And that looks really good. Really good right there. look at that. Um, so the next thing we're going to do is do a little sharpening. So we're going to make another layer. The thing with this as well, you can adjust the opacity of your last action you did. I usually don't mess with the opacity a lot unless I've all sort of overdone it a little bit. Um, but so far this looks really good so I'm not going to touch it for now but opacity does come in handy uh, quite a bit. So next we're going to make another layer 
and call this sharpening one. So we're going to go to filters, sharpen, and the first one I like to do is unsharp mask. It does pretty well, so we'll take a look at the hamburger galaxy. And we want to make that a little sharper than it is, so that's with no sharpening, and then that's with some. I like to keep it around 100. Don't want to overdo it. And that looks pretty good right there. Um, let me take a look at these stars. It is sharpening the stars just a little bit, but that's okay. We can fix that later. So look how much that popped the detail out in those galaxies. Um, definitely in this one here, do before and after. And it really makes them stand out. It uh, disrupts the smoothness of the stars as well, but that can be fixed. But yeah, that really makes a difference on sharpness of your deep sky object. And of course galaxy processing is a lot different than large wide field nebula stuff. So the next thing we're going to do is do some star reduction. This is a very important part of deep sky astrophotography processing is uh, making those stars a lot smaller so your deep sky objects pop out a little more. So we're going to duplicate layer again and call this stars 1. So the, the best way to do it to start out with I have figured out is first of all zoom in and we're going to go to select color range and what we're going to do is select star right in the center there and what that's going to do is select around that color that you picked as you can see it's selected that star and all the stars surrounding it but what we want to do is make that selection larger to encase the whole star and its halo so what we're going to do is uh, go to select modify and expand and I usually expand by about five or six pixels to start with and we can go from there so um, that looks pretty good on most of the stars. The bigger ones you might have to go back and do a little separate. But as you can see it's selected some of the parts of the galaxies. We don't want that so we're going to take the lasso tool and just delete that out. Just like that. And that one. Um, now we can zoom out. Take a look at some of these stars, make sure it's uh, got most of them. So yeah, that looks good to me for now. We might have to go back and change once we see the final result. So now we're going to go to Filter, Other, Minimum. And what this does, it gives you a preview of what the stars are going to look like. Um, so it's sort of deleting some of the color that I don't want to delete. I don't really like that at all. Um, so what we're going to do is go back and readjust that sharpening. Um, because I do not like the way 
I did that. Um, I think I over sharpened it. So we'll go back and redo the sharpening. Um, we'll try smart sharpen this time. I just overdid a little bit on the sharpening. Um, you don't want to get those stars too sharp because they'll just look weird. Um, that actually looks better. Let's take a look at those stars. Amount is already at 200%. I'm going to muff that down to 100. So we're going to try it this way now. So we're going to hit OK. That was with the smart sharpen function. It works really well um, for sharpening. And we can do selective sharpening later on. So it's not a huge deal. So back to the stars. We will select color range again. And we will expand by six. So those in that encases the stars pretty well. We'll go around again and delete those areas that we don't want. So Okay, we're going to try this again. So we'll go to Filter, Other, and Minimum. That looks a lot better. I like the way those stars look now. Um, so yeah, we're going to hit OK. And deselect the selection. And wow, look at that. Stars are a lot smaller and it makes those galaxies stand out a lot more. Look at the difference. So that is a huge difference with uh, the amount of uh, star reduction you can do with this. Um, really makes those galaxies stand out a lot more. That's before, that's after. Huge improvement. Love that. So we're going to zoom back out. And if you want to, you can run the action set on star reduction as well. I don't think I'm going to in this just because I think that's done enough star reduction already but there is a uh, action in the action set that's called make stars smaller right here. So that will further reduce the size of the stars. There's also one that is enhance deep sky object and reduce stars. Um, I do that ever so often depending on the object I'm shooting, uh, just depending on the way it looks. So next up, uh, we're not going to use this action set right now. Well, hold on. Let me see. Actually, we will. We will. Uh, it's called less crunchy, more fuzzy. So it makes those stars more soft looking to the appearance um, instead of some of those smaller stars being sort of blocky and grainy it'll smooth them out and make them look more natural so we're going to run that so less crunchy more fuzzy that's what it's called and then we'll hit play And there we have it. So we'll look at the difference here. And it just makes those stars that much smoother looking. It's very pleasing to the eye. Before and after. That's with star reduction as well. But uh, it's a very powerful tool, really helpful too. It makes really improves 
on the star uh, appearance. It's subtle. It's a very subtle action, but uh, it does help a lot. So uh, right now, I mean, this is a really nice image. I could call it quits now, but there's still some more things we can do. So we're going to do some selective sharpening on the galaxies. So we're going to make another layer. Actually, for this, we're going to actually make a new layer. So for that, we'll do uh, Control Alt N plus E. I believe that's the action. So the next thing we're going to do is some selective sharpening on the galaxies themselves. So what we're going to do, there's other ways of doing this, but this is sort of a quick and easy way. Um, so what we're going to do is take the lasso tool and switch it over to um, add to selection. And what we're going to do is just trace along the outer edges of the galaxies just like I'm doing here and we're going to sharpen them up a bit take that out We don't want to get any of the stars in there, so we'll go around the stars. And we'll go around that galaxy. Alright, so that's pretty good. So now what we're going to do is go zoom in a little bit first. And we'll go to filters, sharpen, and Unsharp mask. And already you can see that extra amount of detail is pulling out. So that's with no sharpening. And that's with sharpening. So I'm going to bump that up to about a hundred and see what the edges look like after that. look over at the much better looking on the hamburger galaxy and you have to remember that this is shot with a 61 millimeter refractor so quite a wild wide field of view but still deep enough to pull some detail out of those galaxies So yeah, that looks good to me. Um, hit OK and see what it looks like before and after on the big screen here. So yeah, that looks that looks really good. Um, yeah, I'm happy with that. And you can spend a lot more time than I am on this in reality because uh, for the sake of the processing tutorial, I'm not going to take forever. I don't want to make it a, an hour long video, but uh, this should give you an idea of how to do some of this stuff. Um, so the thing I want to try to do next, first of all, we're going to get those black points down just a tad. Levels. down to about 11. That nice black background, that's what you want. So, so far I'm really happy with this. Looks really good. Um, but I want to do some 
color boosting within the galaxies themselves. So what we're going to do is make another layer and first of all we're going to go to select color range and I want to select some of this red area the, this hydrogen and alpha region within the galaxy so I want to get right in here and select something like that and I like to turn it on the black and white uh, to give me an idea of what it's selected and we can adjust the fuzziness of the selection so it has selected the stars but once we select this we're going to do we're going to select everything but the stars so we're going to hit OK and now what we're going to do is zoom out and take the lasso and go around all these stars but not the galaxies so what we'll do is go around like that and come back around and select all that let's see what we got so I did it did it wrong, so we'll go back and do lasso. So we're going to zoom out some more. Use this lasso and just take out everything but the galaxies. Then we can fine tune the selection. So now we can zoom back in and take these remaining stars out just like so. We want nothing else selected but the galaxies themselves so that's why we're doing this. Almost got them. Alrighty, that looks good to me. So now we can actually select and mask. So we're going to go to select, select and mask. And what's this going to do is further select and uh, define that area that we want to boost the color in. So it's selected it pretty well and we can adjust the fuzziness and smoothness of it here about like that so we're gonna hit OK and now we're gonna zoom in here just a little bit and go to uh, adjustments vibrance and now we can adjust these colors and I usually like to bump the vibrance up quite a bit and then the saturation up a little bit too. So I really like the way that looks so far. I'm going to bump that up a little bit more on the vibrance. Hit OK. Deselect that. And look at the difference in the color. So it's just made those colors pop more. Um, we'll zoom in on this galaxy here before and after just gives it some more vibrance and detail I really like it so um, that's almost a complete image I believe it is almost complete I'm really happy with it so far this is five and a half hours worth of data so 
Um, looking really good. So we have some nice detail in the core dust lanes of the Hamburger Galaxy. Some very nice detail in the spiral arms in this one. And then some nice dust lane uh, detail there. Um, I'm going to zoom out and see if I want to crop it anymore. And I probably I might crop it just a tad bit more. Do a final crop. Oh, I believe this is a finished image. So I want to thank you guys so much for watching this uh, tutorial. Um, I know it's a new program for me instead of using GIMP. So I will still use, uh, I'll still do some GIMP tutorials every now and then. I know you guys really like the one I did before. Um, so we'll go ahead and export this file. So hit export, export as. Um, and, and you can spend a lot more time, hours and hours, processing uh, pictures. And that's what I usually do. I, I usually take a long time to uh, finesse the picture. But for the sake of the tutorial, I sped things up and did it quickly. But uh, I hope this helped you guys out some. So I usually export my pictures as JPEG files. Um, that's what I usually do and uh, quality at a hundred percent usually I do drizzle my images to make them more resolution if I wanted to print them out or something so we'll go ahead and hit export and we will save it I usually just save it to the desktop to start with So that is it. This is this has been a short uh, processing tutorial on the Leo triplet shot with a Canon XSI and the IDIS LPS D2 light pollution filter. So hope you guys enjoyed this processing tutorial. Uh, I'll keep doing more and more of them as I get more advanced with my processing te techniques. Thank you guys all for watching this video and. Uh, Stay tuned for future uploads on imaging sessions for Galaxy Season, and uh, we're getting close to Milky Way season this time, so Milky Way rises at around 1 to 2 in the morning, so stay tuned for future videos in the next week. Um, I am taking my instrument written test in about 9 days, so I'm getting all prepped up for that, um, so I might not put upload for another week and a half uh, because I'm really hitting the the practice test hard on my instrument rating test for my pilot certificates so um, as always thank you for watching this video thank you guys for all the subscribers on the all the views on the comments so as always thank you for watching Astro Pilot and clear skies